Hi, good evening and welcome to Speak Easy today. So we're here to provide a safe space to discuss subjects which may be seen as taboo within our black communities. Um, it is a safe space and you are anonymous. So only us, the panel, can see your name and we will not be sharing that information. So rest assured that your confidentiality will be kept. Um, please type any questions that you've got in the Q&A box or in the chat box. And as we go along, we'll be asking our guests today throughout the discussion. If you've got any ideas or further discussions, please put it in the chat box or you can contact the team on speakeasy at the bha.org.uk and if you'd like any support or further discussion regarding anything that we discussed today you can contact us on that email address also. So I'm Chantal and I am the Hive Lead at BHA. We're joined today by Yvonne also who is a volunteer with ourselves and George House Trust and Sabrina is our special guest and I'll let you just tell us a little bit about yourself so thanks Hi. for being here today. No thank you for inviting me um, here today so as you said Chantal I'm Sabrina um, I am um, a qualified counsellor and social worker so um, I've got a lot of experience of working with people um, I am drawn to supporting people helping people and just understanding um, who we are and our behaviours um, and our emotional well-being so yeah that's a little bit about me all right thank you so what we're going to kick off with today is we're going to have a discussion about mental health um, in our communities I think it's a subject that we don't really touch on that much so yeah. just to kick off really um how what is mental health Okay, so just in terms of mental health, well, the World Health Organization uh, described mental health as a state of well-being um, in which an individual realizes his or her own potential, uh, can cope with normal um, stresses of life, can work productively, and is able to make contributions to his or her community. So that's what they, they describe um, as mental health, um, which is quite interesting, I feel, um, in terms of you know that they're able to deal with their own with, with stresses um, and understand and unlock their true potential um, because for me as much as I do agree that that is what mental health is I think it's quite interesting that we can define it as that but what about those people that are not taught that that are not taught to to, to unlock their true potential and, and don't know what that is um, so so yeah so that's what's described as mental health. Yeah, that is interesting, actually. Um, like what, what, where, what, what, um, how the WHO define that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the thing, what I'm finding interesting about it is that you said it's an individual's full potential, mm -hmm. and that's something that I think we find difficult to define because we always talk about ourselves as the black community yes. we always refer to ourselves as brothers and sisters mm -hmm. communal aunts and uncles yes one family and when yeah. we are talked about they refer to us as the black or bane yes of yourself separate from your culture yeah. isn't there mm -hmm. I, I, I get a sense it's even frowned on if you want to walk separately or be different. And I think for me, that's very much when you talk about your blackness and there yes. is a sense of it being, def there's a defined way of being black. Yeah. And there's a psychological pressure, if you like, to yeah. conform to that. Yes. And, and I suppose, um, just based on what you've heard, Yvonne, I mean, I can reflect on, um, you know, being a young person um, in the education system um, and how you, um, you know, if you don't behave a certain way, peers then, then say, oh, you're not a true black person. So it's looking at, well, actually, 
now as an adult looking back at that well what's their definition of being a true black person what's their parents view of that what are we living up to? what what's that expectation that we constantly feel that as as a black woman or a black man that we've got to live up to a certain expectation to be part of a black community or be welcomed in that within that community if that makes sense yeah and I, and i think the strength of it historically as well goes back to that if you're not part of the community you're on your own and yeah. uh, being on your own is more than on your own isolated but outcast yeah and there is a fear of if anything happens to you psychologically in your mind you know who's going to be there for you yeah. if yeah. you don't fit the bill or yeah yeah for me I have memories of being told too white Yes. And that was considered a slur. Yes. So, you know, yeah. And it did define not only how I saw myself and the music or the way I dressed. Yes. The way I walk or I talk. That yeah. is defined by others for me. And if you, if you deviate from that in any way mm. or letting the side down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think just, just going on to that, is if we believe from, uh, you know, as, as um, I'm assuming everyone that we're watching this knows about your early childhood experiences and how that shapes and influences who we are. So if from a very early age, we're being told that, you know, I'm going off slightly, but for example, big boys don't cry, um, you've got to be strong to do this. Then when you're hearing as a young person, well, you're not black because you don't behave a certain way or you're too white or you're well spoken or you don't listen to our kind of music you, you, that then does impact on your mental health because actually you're trying to be something or thinking that you've got to be someone or behave a certain way that you don't deep down want to be or feel you need to be so then that then stems on or, or has an impact on well actually who am I who am I and where do I belong and if I don't belong here because you're saying I'm too white or because I'm not listening to the music that you want me to listen to or because I want to play an instrument that's not deemed as what you would approve of then then where do I belong and who, who do I belong to um so so yeah is it wrong though what it, why why should we challenge that if other cultures are proud of culture yeah, and I suppose it's not even about um, not being proud of the culture. Um, it, it's about being your own individual person as part of that culture. Why can't you still, you know, want to be involved in something, you know, listen to a different type of music. It doesn't mean that you're not part of that culture, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's going back to defining who I am. With yeah culture and having that individuality in it yeah and without being shunted away yeah yeah and I think it goes um you know in in terms of your sexuality you know for example being a, a black person who um is not heterosexual um then wh where does that we we know you know in terms of statistics we know that you know black people can be and, and not just black people but we're here to talk about black people but you know maybe excluded from the family and uh, maybe disowned maybe you know looked upon and again it's the impact of that on, on mental health as well and i think there's a there needs to be an unpicking as well because i'm understanding that in other cultures there's been a reclaiming of cultural sexual identities pre-colonialism that in some cultures that those who were transgender or other gender were actually celebrated because there was more of a focus on the spirit of a person than the physical body that they came in mm -hmm. and so there was always a space mm -hmm. where there was a celebration of who you are is about what energy you bring yeah. to the group mm -hmm. rather yeah. than the body you sit in yeah um, and so I'd be interested in what that looked like if it was African and mm -hmm. is there a celebration of sexuality greater than the one we could the, the current place we live in yeah. or sort of def um, definitions yeah that we live in that we live in yeah yeah and 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 i think you're right i think in terms of you know 
other cultures where it's being celebrated and then how it's being perceived in in the African culture or in in any black culture um I think you're right about understanding that further I think one of my um queries and, and interest isn't around um black people feeling comfortable to be able to express their their sexuality um, and not feeling that that they're going to be you know disowned from their family um, and I know that that's that's quite a big issue isn't it outside of you know what we're what we're here to discuss today but it's very interesting and and and, and I can imagine brings a lot of internal feelings for um black people in terms of the feelings of shame the feelings of embarrassment the feelings of letting your family down that there's all those different feelings because of what's instilled in a person from a very young age potentially um and not just from family but what we not so much now, but what we used to see, um, you know, social media, television programs, it was very much heterosexual couples, um, you know, mum and dad married with the children, when that may not be somebody's norm. Um, and again, that can impact on how you're feeling internally and, and then impact on your mental health. Can I just um, thank you? This is all interesting and relevant, but um, I'm just thinking about people who are you know, part of this today or might watch it in the future. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we said what mental health is. Mm-hmm. I've just given some examples, like, you know, what is something that indicates that the mental health, would you say it's a mental health problem, a mental health illness? Like, how do you label that? Yeah. And what, I think, what? yeah, just in terms of that. So one of the things that I know is that we all have some kind of mental health. We all experience some level of anxiety. Um, what they say is, or what my understanding is, is, is mental health difficulties are when it starts to impact on you and your day-to-day functioning. So it may be that you feel, actually, I can't leave the house today. Um, you, you know, you can't get out of bed for days on end. You don't want to take care of your physical self anymore um, that you want to cause harm to yourself and um, that you're thinking of harming others um, that you know you, 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 you're using alternative methods as coping mechanisms such as drugs and alcohol um, so, so yeah I think it's you're feeling distressed um, emotionally distressed there are all the signs of, of mental health as, I, I suppose um, you know yeah so I hope I've been a bit clear with that Chantelle you have definitely, thank you. But I'm just thinking about someone who might not recognise that. Because mm-hmm. it might be how they function. Because yeah. that's the norm. They've seen that's- mum or yeah. dad or aunt yeah. or cousin or whoever function like that. So that's how I function because that's yeah. the reason. That's what I see. Yeah. You know, normal for me. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, some I, I work with a range of people and some people may experience mental health, anxiety, depression from a very young age. So that may be their norm. That's all they know. That's all they know to live with. Um, but I, I suppose my thing is about, is about you know, we, we all, there is support out there for everybody. And even if you think that this is my norm, if you feel that it's impacting on actually, I do want to socialise with my friends. Or I do want to feel that little bit happier about myself or that bit confident or I don't want to cope by hurting myself you know on a regular basis that there is there is support out there um for people um it's about I suppose what's hard in, in, in what we've identified is if that's your norm, it's having somebody or something that makes you realize actually I I I can do more than this or I can have more than this or I don't need to feel like this and that's not an easy thing really to um unpick and and overcome um mm. as in a very short time such as our discussion here i think you know it's it's on an individual basis but it is about they may have lived with that for years and know no different but if you're watching this today and you think actually i do want a bit different for myself that there is support out there you can speak to your gp there's mental health services such as mind if you're in education or employment then there there should be um support mental health support there as well maybe there's the opportunity for someone to access talking therapy such as counseling or cognitive behavioral therapy these are all these are all probably terms that maybe not a lot of people have heard of but what i would be saying is that 
there is support out there and what you don't need to do is go through feelings of feeling low feeling down on your own because there is there is support out there the first part of call I would say is if someone's questioning how they feel and they think this doesn't feel right and I've been feeling like this for too long that your GP is the first person that I would recommend that they talk to I know that some people would have jumped in and um, said we want um, the whole issue of race can cause a lot of emotional as well as mental distress to us because it's about an identity which is not ours. And I know that the Afro-Caribbean Mental Health Care Service exists as well. Yeah. So that you can look at yourself as an individual, irrespective of being black, but also if you want to talk about, okay, this is how racism is affecting me, mm -hmm. then there is that group. But actually any good therapist should be able to we know the reality is that may be difficult the ideal is to be with someone who can take race and its impact on you into account yes but i yeah. know we started talking earlier because yeah if we clued in we can talk about how racism impacts us and how you have to walk a certain way and mm -hmm. you have to be clued in that the guard isn't walking around the blinking mm -hmm. shop yes checking you yeah. yeah so we're used to that but the one that we were talking about earlier are the ones that we march to mm -hmm. like for me i was saying earlier to you about the image of the strong black woman yeah and saying how i found that really heavy yeah a weight to carry or when people say to me you're too soft because yeah. there is an expectation of me to be mm -hmm. something and every time i feel i don't hit the mark yeah. as a black person or strong yes. or mouthy yeah. I feel I have failed or I'm not getting it right and I feel yeah. like I'm constantly trying to shift yeah. to some sort of marker yeah. that doesn't work for me but I've got to achieve it yeah can yeah. we talk more about some of the markers that we've got that we may not even realize we've got yeah so I don't know whether here would be a good point, really, because what I, um, as part of my studying, I was really interested in intergenerational trauma. Um, and, you know, so as you're saying now about this, this marker that's been placed on us as, as, a, as, a, as a culture, you know, this strong, but where does that come from? Um, and what we know when we look back to slavery, um, you know, that we've got, hundreds of years of, of trauma that people have experienced that has been filtered down and never thoroughly addressed um, and then I for you know I'll just show you this book that I think is absolutely um, brilliant so I don't know if you can see that but it's Black Issues in the Therapeutic Process um, and it's by Aisha Mackenzie Mavinga um, and one of the things that she, she uh, highlights in her book is about the position of slavery was damaging for everyone concerned with it as in all situations in which there are perpetrators and victims it's what the victims do with their minds with the horrors they experience to the lack to a large extent determines the future state of the mind and that of the individual so i suppose just referring to that that was survival you know we've got ancestors that fought to survive and then generations you know have passed where that's been imposed on us that we can achieve everything but we've got to be strong we can't be um you know we we have to achieve it and that means you've got to be a strong black woman and you hear about being a strong black woman and actually and i think you mentioned earlier yvonne about the rosa parks and um, you know that that, sh that that made a stance that that day but do we have to be strong can strong not my view is being that be feeling that you have to be strong all the time can have a detrimental impact on our mental health because we don't have to be we're human and actually if we feel that we have to be strong all the time where does that leave us i think it leaves us in a very vulnerable position because ultimately we can feel that we can't turn to anyone for any help and support so i'm very open you know i will turn to other people for support and for help because actually that's healthy that's what we need to be doing as humans we need to be turning to friends turning to specialists because we don't have to be strong all the time we don't have to be i feel fighting our way through 
through everything when actually that's so it can be overwhelming um and it can just make us feel um just you know it's just it's just puts us in a really i think difficult um, and unhealthy state to be in so yeah i hope that helps a little bit we only want to talk about this so much don't we um i don't even know where we start and i don't know where we end with it but mm-hmm. yeah it's the whole i'm every woman yeah, <laughs> yeah. what do you say the bag lady like yeah step, and and that's not to dis, you know, take away the fact that men go through this as well, but just yeah. thinking about our experience and what comes up in that and that need to push on and flood on and, you know, you, you have to be broken before you realise, oh, let me take a break and how long is that break? And whatever you do anyway to make yourself feel better, is that good enough or is that the right thing to do? Yeah. Talking, you, you mentioned talking about it to you know, your friends or your family are professional. How many of us do that? And but uh, and that goes back to, have we seen that? Did we see our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents seeking support? No. Well, I can say I didn't. What you see is we. you, you don't talk about your problems. Don't talk about your business. You yeah. don't talk your business. Everyone keeps the stuff to themselves. You put on a face and you're out there. You've got this mask on and you're out there. So as much as I say, I sit here and say it's about talking to friends, it's about talking to professional family, that's not what our, we, as, as a black community, no, that's not what well, I can talk. I've not seen that I you know mm-hmm. and even with, with you know mental health there's the whole stigma about accessing counselling you know oh you don't talk about your business to anyone you don't access therapy what do we see in terms of the mental health system I mean I've not got statistics in front of me but we know that black people are over rep- overly represented in the mental health s- system in terms of you know schizophrenia and um, sectioning we know that there's a high proportion of more of black people that are represented in the mental health system. Well, why is that? Why is that? It does it go back to the fact that we're not taught to talk, to express our feelings, express our emotions. And I also was looking at, in terms of, you, you, you talked about the Rosa Parks and the great achievers. Mm. I, I feel that in some ways what we've got is a very limited range yeah. of emotions. We're either angry mm. or we're fighting against it. So every image that is created of us is so limited. It's mm. very difficult to feel safe enough or even to some degree courageous enough to, yeah. to, to have a soft side, to yeah. have a vulnerable side, to yeah. have a side that is to breathe yeah. and not be enough to to fail yes. to not be good enough yes. to, to be able to like everybody else express a full range of emotions to be able to express all of our humanity yeah other yeah. than and and it takes quite a lot of thinking through to be able to say actually there's more to me than this I'm more complex than that yeah. without feeling yeah you've let the side down, down. in some yeah 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 no I totally agree and I think you know it's learning that isn't it and I think that's that's the difficulty um in terms of we we can now have these discussions and and everybody that's watching can hear these discussions but ultimately when we're we've we're not aware of other ways to manage our emotions to express ourselves um with and and being okay with being referred to as you've let the side down well actually that's okay because i'm doing what feels right for me Mm -hmm. um and it's 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 getting to that point where you're okay with not being perceived as being the strong woman all the time because being vulnerable is okay being in need of support is okay but because as a community we've not been taught that or we don't believe that that's where we, we continue that cycle we continue it you've um mentioned about um us being overrepresented you know in the system um and you know we're more likely to be diagnosed with schizophrenia or an unseen section further on and on and um, mm. when i'm just thinking as as being young 
and seen someone in the community who may have been suffering from mental health difficulty that was seeing that person mad. That's yes. Weird. That's the label, isn't it? The mad. Yeah. They're yeah. mad. Yeah. But not really understanding what mad is. They're just mm-hmm. but not understanding what's going on through their mind. Yeah. Why their behavior is this way. Mm-hmm. What's affected them to, you know, yeah. be this way. Yeah. Do you think that stigma of mental health difficulties being seen as mad mm-hmm. something that we need to contend with in our community as well i do i definitely do think that this that stigma of they're just mad um needs to needs to be um dealt with within our community but i i i think you know also it's about people understanding what mental health is and i think i think what happens and this is just my my experience is people shy away because they don't want to be labeled as being mad Mm -hmm. so actually it's safer in that comfort zone to deal with any issues on their own because because if you have any support for your mental health or you're mad and you know it's 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 contending with that stigma um so yeah i definitely think there needs to be more awareness um on mental health on the benefits of um, talking therapy or accessing any other kind of therapy, on self-care, because I think self-care is a really big one um, in terms of people feeling okay with putting themselves first and meeting their own their own needs and you know again it's what does that mean for them does it mean I'm selfish because I'm saying no I'm putting boundaries in place does it mean I'm selfish because I want to have some me time um, and and there are the things that I think we need again to be promoting within the black community. Is there anything wrong with being selfish? Um, no. <laughs> yeah but as we say it as we say it yeah. I know that most of the stuff that goes on in our heads are most of the representations of about people who've been selfless. Yeah. We, we don't uh, whether it's our own communities or the wider community particularly women but not specific to the whole notion of considering yourself is just a no-no because we are groomed to be selfless because it is about looking after other people yeah and I think what I'm interested in exploring is the notion of what trauma looks like Mm. uh, and flagging up okay do you think you're traumatized these are signs of trauma that you may want to address Mm. and also scaling down because when we say madness or mental health we mm-hmm. talk schizophrenia like you go yeah. from zero to a, yeah. To yeah. yeah 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 you're definitely going to be sectioned in it yeah and i'm thinking actually for most of us mental ill health is anxiety mm-hmm. unspoken of depression mm-hmm. bipolar mm-hmm. and we can a lot of us may be functioning well or not well yeah. between all of these yeah. different states. Yeah. Can you talk to us more about that so that we can start identifying what they look like? Yeah. So in terms of um, trauma, these, you know, how does that manifest? It's, it's, I suppose what I'm going to be saying is it depends on how we receive trauma and when we receive it. Because as, you know, people receive trauma in different stages of their life and can look in in, in different ways um for example someone may you know a, a form of trauma um without re-traumatizing whoever's watching this but a form of trauma can be childhood abuse um you know and, and not being allowed or not feeling comfortable with sharing that so then they carry that trauma and that trauma can manifest itself in entering unhealthy relationships and um, having low self-worth and um, low self-esteem and um, not looking after yourself and um, being abusive towards yourself as well and when I say that it's about again you know being in unhealthy relationships and um, putting yourself in risky situations and um, not you know not being kind to yourself being being verbally and you know I see I've seen clients who where they, they talk negatively about themselves and believe those negativities that they share about themselves so it's it's really hard in terms of 
what does trauma look like because it depends on the type of trauma um i work with people who have experienced adverse childhood traumas like i've said you know traumas in in the childhood but then you could have a a, a catastrophic i can't say the word but a high-end trauma which um you know maybe maybe a crash that leaves them in you know a very traumatic and anxiety provoking state um so I think it's really difficult, Yvonne, just to be clear in terms of what that trauma, what what indicators of trauma are. I think like you've touched on, we've got anxiety. Well, where does that come from? If you're feeling overly anxious and you feel that it's impacting on, you know, your day to day functioning, let's explore that. Like I've said before, there's help and there's support available. If it's that you're noticing a pattern that actually I, I keep getting in abusive relationships, it might be, and, and I'll say this, because that's what you know, that's what you've seen, that's what your parents, you know, demonstrated to you, and you know that was with your grandparents' relationships as well. So that, that's a form of trauma, but a trauma that's, in a sense, has been normalised, well, actually, but no, it's it's not okay, and, it's, and it doesn't need to be normalised, because you deserve more than that. You know, it could be that you've been involved in, guns and gangs and the trauma that's associated with that that you've lost a loved one a loss is a huge thing um that i don't think we talk about enough especially in the black community um you know th there's loss there people that experience loss that's a trauma it doesn't matter what type of loss it is it doesn't matter when it happened that's a trauma and without having the right support or you've got to step in now to take care of the rest of the family and you've just got to be, be seen as getting on with it Where's your needs there? Where, where, where's that person then lost in that process because they've just got to get on with it? One of the other big things as well is um, caring responsibilities. I don't think we acknowledge enough in our community or any community. Um, you know, I, I'm quite open. I was a young carer from a very young age of a parent with mental health difficulties. And I don't think it's spoken about enough. Even as an adult of someone with mental health difficulties, you're just expected to accept it. That's your parent. You accept it. Well, actually, what about the support for, for you as the individual? Because are you then seen as not being that strong black person, that strong black woman or man, because you need some support because you're struggling with what you're going through? Um, you know, the, the, the trauma that's associated with that as well. I just don't feel that it's spoken about enough. I feel that actually it's kind of, well, it's an expectation of you. That, that, you've, you've, that is a community I'm say that. Expectation. Yeah. yeah that we care and it does because i think what we've lost is context because I, i've always said back in the day we lived communally and therefore mm. looking after children or mm. looking after the elders wasn't one person's job yes, it the was everybody's. yeah now what's happened is one person will carry that yeah. because they think it's the right thing to do yeah, yeah. I think what's traumatic about it is that there is no no. You are not given permission to say no. You yeah. are expected. So you even calling in when mm. reality, when common sense is saying you need help, yeah. you can't do that. And we cannot rely on people who are outside of the Black yeah. community. So it makes mm. it very difficult to get care. Yeah. And I think it's not just carers but I also think as children the I will give you something to cry about when we beat a child yes is about disempowering a person to their own rights yeah that we're so used and I think this comes back to um slavery we're so yeah. used to being beaten that we've normalized it and almost We've put it on a pedestal and it's not just black culture, but I talk about it mm. in terms of slavery and the whole mindset yeah. that you have to teach your child to be strong despite a level of brutality yes. that most people put in prison. And yeah. yet had generation after generation having to manage that. And yeah. now we don't know or few of us realise that actually you can break a child's spirit, but also that you can raise a person or an individual without having to brutalise them to achieve yeah. that. That skill in itself, yeah. I would like to, that conversation about how do we raise our children without putting our hands to them. Yeah. And 
and to be able to recognize the nurturing of a spirit yeah rather than your kids through yeah to their 18 and jason and yeah because their cargo because that because yeah. for me i see that our parenting the qualitative side can be lost yeah. in the getting us through to the yeah. other side and i think what we're doing there when we're we're physically chastising our children is we're inflicting fear Aren't we? We're inflicting fear on our children, the same fear that our ancestors would have experienced uh, uh, within slavery. So what that is, it's about breaking that cycle. But actually, that's a very, you know, it's it's what happens. And if you don't physically abuse your children, physically chastise your children, how are you perceived as a parent then? what do you hear they just need a good hiding yeah. they just need a good a good beat in them they've got no manners but if you give them a good hiding get the belt to them get the shoe to them get this to them and then what's the perception of you as a, as a strong um, black parent now that you're not doing that so you don't fit in you know so it's it's dealing with those internal expectations of of your let me rephrase that it's dealing with feeling comfortable with in a sense negative perceptions of you as a parent by everybody else in the black community if that's how it would be um because that i think i think you're very right there i think it is about um you know that's in a sense parent how to parent that's because that's how they were parented and i'm not saying everyone you know physically chastises the child i'm not saying that we've all been physically chastised um you know i i don't i never have done but i wasn't physically chastised either and um, so that's not something that i learned but that's very separate but however i do think that it's feeling comfortable with being okay with other people's perceptions of well why don't you give them a good hiding why don't you get the bell out to them? Because that's all they know. Um, you know, especially, and I'm, I'll take that back, not especially, but we know there's an increased awareness of, of an increased number of, you know, children of black African families where that is still going on. I mean, it goes on in lots of families, um, but, you know, speaking from experience, I, I have seen a lot of children who, and parents that just, you know, minimize it and don't understand the long-term implications we know that we've got you know for anyone that's watching that there is a charity um, that supports um black people to understand or african people to understand you know the 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 ways that the, the legalities within the uk um around uh, child abuse um black black children being physically harmed by parents and, and how that looks and how that feels um, so yeah, so I'm sorry yeah, you're going to feel fruca, like it's, isn't it, it is a fruka, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to just go back. So you're talking about we've gone from like we'll, we'll talk about being mad, but it'll be straight up to bits of phrenia. Yeah. Um, straight there, <laughs> no in between or there's no in between before, definitely. Um, just can I just say, Shan? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just. Just one of the things there, though, where we go from not to... So we go from feeling a little bit anxious to we're going to be sectioned. Yeah. I think that's around education. I don't feel we have enough promotion of what is mental health and that it's okay to seek support, that it doesn't mean that you're mad if you want support for your mental health. And I think that's where that comes in, Chantel. But I also agree. Um, yeah, I also just think we, we don't deal with medication because if you talk about okay mental health and they say well you can take these tablets mm. we're a community who function on the fear of medication yeah we yeah. don't teach each other well okay how do I become informed mm. or more informed about the types of medication that are out there as well as herbal medication how do I clue in when it's working and when it's not working, whether yeah. it's herbal or it's pharmaceutical? I just mm. think we just go, as I witnessed with COVID, it was just a blanket. It just felt like yes. a blanket touching that stuff. Yes. It's made yeah. from monkey brains. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so I want to discuss that. <laughs> I really did. Oh, but just, I was just wanting to put in the whole of maybe 
fear of wanting to discuss your mental health or even go to a GP alone your friend because thinking that can you afford to be that ill if the destination is some sort of incarceration and can we to do that and yeah. is it a case of we are we had this discussion didn't we Yvonne that are we incarcerated too early or are we too far gone which is it and and I suppose and this is just me speaking from you know just just speaking out loud but does that go back to understanding you know black people black personalities black behaviors because one of the things that we I hear a lot and and probably yourselves is they're very aggressive you know oh that person's very aggressive when actually they're not it's just the way of how they express themselves so if I'm just wondering where we talk about being incarcerated section too early is that because actually we don't know how to manage this personality this behavior as opposed to we need to get them we we need to we need to enforce this now because if we don't they're going to become really unwell I don't know it's a really yeah 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 and yes a case of cultural competence isn't it as well that's what you're touching on yeah yeah but I also think there's a dynamic that is as well about the them because we've talked about how slavery has impacted on our behavior but what is never talked about is the impact on white behavior because that comes from a mindset of needing to control a particular group of people who historically if you imagine you're a minority living in a majority of people who are uprising the yeah. fear then is i have to control them i have to manage them there are more than me yeah so i've got to instill fear in them so that when that they don't even realize mm. they can rise up yeah. they have their own agency mm. but that too that mindset still hasn't been addressed mm. so there is a latent fear always continuing in that group that yeah. there is a need to oppress the wider group yeah. the perception is yeah. Yeah. and therefore when we present if nothing else has changed if the if the unconscious bias is about being afraid of them and what they will do when yeah. you step into a situation where someone's aggressive yeah. there is a protocol normally for how to de-escalate but if yeah. you are already yourself in fear mode you don't re- you don't reach to that protocol yeah. what you're doing is you're responding yeah. to a latent fear of having to control or yeah. subdue so it needs to be looked at at both sides yeah. because I may have mental ill health, I may be Mm. aggressive, but your response to me needs to be measured. It needs to be monitored. I also may need to learn that the fear that I have may be or may not be rational. I may help, but I've got to feel that when I present, it's going to be safe and it's going to be measured the same as anybody else. So it's my fear is that if we also look at it always in terms of our behavior yeah we miss the responsibility of the third yeah. party yeah 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 no yeah and I, and I hear that and I think you're very right in terms of the responsibility of the third party you know it's not it's we we may present as a culture in us with certain behaviors but it's how that's responded to um, and that's what's really important I think as well Sorry, I cut in. Um, it's okay. Because you were talking about the medicine as well. And like, yeah. I knew with this, an hour wasn't going to be long enough. <laughs> <laughs> but Yvonne, you did touch on like speaking about like using, you know, prescribed pharmaceutical medication and then, you know, seeking the advice from a herbalist and using natural remedies. Like, I don't know if you want to continue. Yeah, sure. so, so, for instance, for me, personally strong black woman strong black woman strong black woman Mm. the wheels are falling off the bus not feeling brilliant wanting to lie back stare Mm. at the ceiling Mm. and then I sit down and talk it through with the nurse and she says 
do you think you might be depressed black people don't get mm. depressed that's me yeah. answering me black people don't yeah. get depressed yeah so these symptoms that i've got mm. that's just how we are and we yeah. don't talk about in, in fact that's that whole suppression of i'm not feeling brilliant but yeah. i've got to get up i've yeah. got to keep going and so when she said to me take this medication I thought oh I went straight into and then I had to kind of sit with myself and say well what is this about and I started taking it now it actually worked but you when I try to talk to people there is a resistance to hear yeah. actually it might work actually mm -hmm. this stuff that you're feeling isn't normal and suppressed yeah. doesn't help and again, it's about slowing the escalator down from, and it's not always a given that you're going to end up with schizophrenia, but mm -hmm. it's to be able to start saying, feeling crap yeah. is a measure that something is not right. Yeah. And yeah. how do I start figuring out yeah. what that is before I start trying to suppress it because remember what we do when we don't talk about it is it's all forms of suppression yeah and that's the other thing because we talk about taking drugs for me the drug of choice is to work harder yeah yeah i work so hard that you, you you're too tired to think about it you're too tired to think and again, there are behaviors yeah yeah that we might not even recognize mm -hmm. that we are doing as a way of not feeling and not yeah. having to deal with the way we feel mm. that because yeah I don't think we're we're taught how to express and how to manage uncomfortable feelings one of the other things I mean I totally agree with them but I also think there's an element of us constantly trying to prove ourselves prove that we can do everything prove that we can achieve everything and when when you're struggling because I think you know we do put a lot on ourselves because it's that you know you've got to be this strong black woman and when you're struggling don't express that so I know you've made reference to suppressing our feelings but if we think about the constant suppression of feelings the stresses of work the stresses of family life the stresses of finances the stresses of the global pandemic the stresses of, of day-to-day life but we're not taught to talk about that that's got to go somewhere that's got to come out somewhere and it's looking at well where does it come out do you learn actually it's safe it's okay to talk it's okay to, to need a bit of help it's okay to take advice of professionals such as your gp other because where else does that go there's only so much as human beings we can take it, there's only so much so where does that start to seep out there's a term that we use in in counseling where there's a sponge and it can only soak up so more bef so much before it starts dripping and and that's your emotions start dripping out well what are we going to do with that that's interesting mm. possibly talking about catching i being able to identify it catching it early managing it looking at ways of managing it put, with herbal yeah. or with pharmaceutical yeah the other side to it is what does healthy look like because i'm exactly. thinking okay can we talk about what healthy looks like then yeah. so that we're creating a, a, some sort of okay we've lived this way but mm -hmm. actually this is what it should look like yeah so I think healthy is looking healthy is about you know feeling that you can get up in the morning and not every morning because some of us can't we're tired but that's human but feeling like you can get up feeling like you get some enjoyment out of your day-to-day -day activities feeling okay with your decisions feeling that you know there is they might you might feel a little bit worried or a little bit anxious about something but it's not stopping you from engaging in your day-to-day -day life and um, that you can go out that you can form social have social relationships with people that you can if you if you're working that you can hold down a job that you can focus that you can concentrate um that you know you, you you're eating healthily or, or there's no change in you in your patterns of behaviors um so, so yeah, I, I suppose that's what healthy would look like. But everybody's health is going to look different and going to be different because we're all different. But I suppose what I would be saying is that what we said earlier about what would be indicators of, of ill mental health, that you're not 
seen any of them and if you do because we might do we might be going through a low period in our time in our lives but that we're able to come out of that and it's not long standing that you feel comfortable with saying to a friend or to a family member I've had a really rubbish week and knowing that it's okay to do that and that you've not got to keep it to yourself um so that would be how I would describe healthy so life shouldn't so some of the yeah life shouldn't feel heavy and that, that's too blank that's too big a statement but I think by asking myself the question how am I feeling mm -hmm. about and then sitting and thinking it through if I started identifying things in my life or how I felt that were not making me feel good maybe start looking at okay why not yeah yeah why not and what can I do about it? Yeah. Because one of the things that I'm very, very passionate about, and I know me and Chantel have regular conversations about this is, um, you know, I, I believe that we can all achieve what we want to achieve. It's, you know, we all have challenges in life um, and I'm not sitting here saying we don't, but it's about knowing that this support out there to help you overcome those challenges and that you're not on your own um, and that would be one of the things that you know I think is very very key a key message um, as part of today that actually you're not on your own and it's about you know seeking support so that life doesn't feel heavy that life does feel enjoyable um, and that life any difficulties that you've got the skills or the tools to overcome those difficulties whether you do that on your own or seeking some support it doesn't it's not a sign of failure and um, because that's one thing that I'm very clear on needing support around your mental health is not a sign of failure actually I would argue it's a sign of strength that you're willing to access some support it doesn't have to be professional support it can be just a phone call with a friend going to the neighbours having a bite to eat or whatever works for you but it's just knowing that you don't have to go through anything on your own brilliant thank you so we are coming to the end of today's discussion way too soon way too soon um i don't know if you've got any last words that you want to say before we say goodbye um i think I, I would just say that there's been quite some um there's been lengthy discussions today about different topics around um, mental health but what i would say my key message is that the support out there, you're not on your own. And that if there's anything that's been said today um, that would make you feel that that's an indicator that actually my mental health isn't as good as it could be, that please, you know, take this message and, and just seek some support. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength and you don't have to go through anything on your own. Um, so, so, yeah. Definitely not on your own. And there are more of us out there. In fact, some of the people that are held up as being really strong have support where they key in and do check-ins on their mental health. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, part of, yeah, uh, uh, never believe for one minute that whatever you're going through is something that you're struggling with on your own because there are other people out there going through the same. Yeah, and yeah. the first, yeah, measure of, getting better is reaching out yeah reaching out yeah. for the support definitely yeah definitely yeah. so thank you for coming today thank you for having me <laughs> um it's yeah it's been really informative and hopefully you know viewers have got a lot out of this yeah. um, you know signposting to go to your gp or using yeah. your system and um, or speaking to someone who is you know a counselor or therapist you know they are ways in how yeah. you help with your mental health um thanks a lot for your discussion and see you again soon thank you for having me and see you soon thank you. you soon bye bye bye, bye.